We've been talking and celebrating that today is Palm Sunday. And uh, Jesus very much had a purpose in going to Jerusalem. Of course, Bethany was very close to Jerusalem. He had good friends there, Mary, Martha, Lazarus. And he would go there and hang with them and be with them, as we all would with any of our good friends. But this time, Jesus had a real purpose. And after he rode on the donkey colt and the, the people were shouting Hosanna, he entered Jerusalem, as we read before, and went into the temple area, went to the temple. Very specifically, he knows he's going there for God. God has a purpose. And as we shared, I think, last week, in the weeks and months leading up to Jerusalem, Jesus told three different times to his disciples, the Son of Man, that's me, I'm going to suffer and uh, be killed, and on the third day, rise again. He's informing them that this is why he's going. So uh, Jesus has very much of a clear purpose of where he's going, what he's doing, and what God has called him uh, to be and to do. Now, in our uh, elders' circles, as well as a few other leaders in our church, they're asking questions like, well, why do we do what we do at Joy Vineyard Church? What is the purpose, again, of the, of the church? And I spoke uh, to some of you about this. I can say this publicly. We've had our mission statement, and then we talked about, well, hey, the, under the mission statement, this needs to be fleshed out. What are some sub-goals under that mission? Do we need a catch-all phrase that would kind of embody the mission in a few words? So we talked about some possibilities. Some people call a vision, a mission, a purpose. They call it different things. We want to be on the same page with our vocabulary, of course, as well. But uh, today we're going to talk about, as Jesus had purpose going to Jerusalem, he knew, where, he knew where he was going, why he was going, why he was doing what he was doing. We want to talk about the general mission of Joy Vineyard Church. Now, Mission is a word, I think it's derived from Latin, that means uh, to send. So a missionary is a sent one. So why is God sending us here out in the world when we become saved through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? God just doesn't beam us up, you know, to heaven. Okay, you're saved. That's it. You're in heaven with me. Wonderful. Leave behind all of the tears and the, the grief, the mourning, the the anxiety of this world, just come on up to heaven. No, he leaves us here for a purpose. So uh, he sends us the mission, the sending of Joy Vineyard Church. The word church, of course, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the word church, if I remember correctly, ecclesia, the called out ones. Again, we're called out uh, from the world to be his people. And so we gather in Jesus' name as a church to be his people here on this earth. We are a vineyard church. We belong to a movement of churches called the Vineyard. It started back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. I happened to be in Southern California when the Vineyard movement started. And I was in Fullerton. And Fullerton is in Orange County, uh, just a little bit north of Anaheim. And I heard about this crazy uh, John Wimber. I say crazy because I heard that while well, he's, you know, praying and, and healing, people are being healed and different gifts of the Spirit are in operation. And uh, of course, in the mid 80s, he started writing books, but some of his teachings were starting to go out. And I thought, you know, I got to check out this John Wimber. This is down in Anaheim. I'm very close here in Fullerton. So uh, I was very active in my own church on Sunday morning. So I thought, I'm going to go Sunday night and uh, check it out. So I went to the Anaheim Vineyard, and it used to meet in a warehouse, okay? They, like a converted warehouse. And it was a warehouse. It looked like a warehouse. It was very simple, very basic. And uh, I went on Sunday night, I remember, and I sat in the last row. In the last row, the chairs were up against the wall. And I thought, that's where I want to be. <laughs> I don't know about this. And I was expecting a theatrical performance. 
You know, I was expecting him to be, you know, going all over the place like this, you know, and flapping his Bible. Maybe not referring to his Bible very much, but hey, you got to carry it. It looks good, right? I'm a religious guy. So in talking and getting very emotional, and this is what I expected. And I thought, is this church going to be a biblical church or just wave the Bible around? You know, what's going to happen here? So I sat in my <laughs> the last row with my back <laughs> up against the wall. I thought, this is a good spot to be, close to the exit, so I can get out of here if I have to, and I can watch everybody. What's happening? I had two Bibles with me, two different translations. And I know I've shared this with some of you before. And the worship was wonderful. And, you know, and I kind of participated a little bit in that. But I was still, you know, discerning and kind of looking around. And and then the uh, John Wimber began a message and he was sitting down. And I thought, oh, well, that's not what I expected. Remember, I expected the theatrical going across the stage and waving the Bible. I thought he probably does that on Sunday morning, you know. Okay, Sunday evening, a little more laid back. He's sitting down and just simply going verse by verse through a text. I thought, oh, wow, you know. And I forgot to mention something that happened during the worship time. The worship was before the teaching. And the, uh, during the worship, somebody stood up, and I know there's kind of a group singing in tongues type of thing, which is more kind of a melodic kind of worship that the Spirit intercedes to, uh, in words we can't express and so forth, as part of singing worship. But a woman got up, and a very clear tongue, you know, spoke out very loudly, her, and you know, spoke in tongue this message, standing up. Well, John Wimber, this was kind of during the, the worship time, he said, you know, he kind of asked the band to, to kind of tamper down the, the music a little bit, and, and he said, well, thank you, sister, for that tongue. And then he just opened up the Bible, 1 Corinthians 14, if anybody has a tongue, may there be someone found to interpret it. So I thank you for that tongue, sister. Now we're going to wait for an interpretation from God for this tongue. Well, I, of course, I'm looking at the Bible, you know. Oh, yeah, it does say that. <laughs> and we all waited, and it seemed very uncomfortable wait, because now nothing was happening. We're waiting for interpretation. There was no interpretation. So John Wimber got up, just opened the Bible again, and said, well, the Bible says that if no interpreter be found, may that person, you know, Speak, but be quiet and speak between themselves and God. That message was not for uh, the, the assembly. So he said, well, I ask your sister, as the Bible says, you know, uh, to, 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 uh, to sit down and, uh, you know, to uh, not to, there was no interpretation to be found for what you shared. And I thought, wow. And then it was a very biblical message. And so I was a kind of, from, and I started going a little bit on Sunday evenings, but I was very active in my own church. I didn't drop my own church. And then we went, of course, overseas as, as missionaries, and I met uh, my wife. And I was kind of an admirer of the vineyard from afar. And there was power evangelism, power healing, which many of you know these books. But there was a third book, not as well known, Power Points, which talked about, you know, what the vineyard actually believes, Right? And uh, so, anyway, uh, when we came back from the mission field, and uh, then I kind of hooked up with a vineyard church here in Virginia Beach and, and went on from there. So we are a vineyard church, and I'm not going to talk about all of the emphases of the, of the vineyard church, but the vineyard wants to be in the radical middle the Quest for the Radical Middle, it's a great book uh, talking about uh, the vineyard, some of the history, some of the beliefs of the vineyard, between the evangelical wing of the, of the church of Jesus Christ and the more Pentecostal wing, okay? The vineyard is kind of, shall we say, in the radical middle. And uh, so we're not a Pentecostal church in the classical sense that... Uh, we believe there has to be a distinct second experience, which some of our Pentecostal brothers and sisters call a baptism of the Holy Spirit marked by tongues. That's not the position of the Vineyard Church. Now, we've had some people, some of our Pentecostal brethren, come to our church over the years, and 
And they think from, you know, the exercise of the, of the gifts and the encouragement, the teaching, that this is a Pentecostal church, but it's not. But we are a renewed evangelical, if you want to put it that way. We want to be biblical in, in what we are. And we might be charismatic. Char- charismata means gifts. And uh, uh, so we are in that radical middle uh, between these wings. And we know that God uses all wings in His church, right? Praise the Lord. And uh, the day we think we have perfect theology, well, uh, you know, maybe we need to be humbled. Uh, so, you know, pr- praise the Lord. We seek as well as we can to look through issues, look at the Scriptures. God, lead, lead us. Uh, illuminate Your Word by Your Spirit. Show me, God, what is taught here. We ask others what's happening here. So we are Vineyard Church, Joy Vineyard Church. We've had the word Joy Vineyard Church for some years, and I was a pastor, and uh, we had different, uh, at the time, different uh, struggles in our church, and the Lord gave me a word. I was in prayer on my bed, I remember it very distinctly, and praying for the church, and the Lord said the name of the church is to be Joy Vineyard Church. I'm like, you know, well, what church, you know? <laughs> Our church? Yeah, you know, the, the church I pastor, the church I've been praying for here on this bed. <laughs> the name of the church is to be Joy Vineyard Church. Well, I thought, no, that's, they're not going to like that and so forth. Well, <laughs> I said, Lord, you know, okay, you know, but uh, the first two people I shared this with uh, in the church, and I'm not going to say who they were, but uh, they thought, no, no, that's not going to fly. No, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> but amazingly, by the grace of God, as I shared with leadership in the church at that time, and slowly, because change is difficult in any church, whether it's a name, whether it's the form of what you do on Sunday mornings, uh, where you sit. And I know uh, a year or two ago, we kind of swapped seats. We want to have some variety. We want to change. I want the Lord to change me. I want Him to change me. You know, so I may eat the same thing for breakfast every morning, but you know what? I want Jesus to do something new in me. His love is new every morning, every morning, right? Great is His faithfulness. So I just don't want to get stuck in a rut, even if I think it's a good rut, right? Lord Jesus, do what you will in my life. Change me as you desire. So uh, we became Joy Vineyard Church, all right? And shortly thereafter... We talked about, you know, what does that mean? And a few people in the church honestly said, you know, well, does this mean I have to be joyful when I come to this church? That I have to be joyful all the time? We talked about what that means. Uh, Joy, we looked at Scripture, what joy is, and so forth. No, it doesn't mean you have to be joyful all the time. But in Christ, Lord God, help me to be encouraged even on my darkest day, right? Right? My darkest day, Lord, you are God. You are God. And I know I pray this, I pray this often with the elderly patients that I visit. Oh Lord, whether, you know, I'm sad, mad, glad, depressed, however I feel emotionally, and our emotions go up and down, Lord, you are God. And there is no other. Like Peter said, right? When Jesus said, oh, some people stop following Jesus. And then, Jesus turned to the disciples, well, what about you? Are you going to stop following me too? Things were getting rough and people were leaving. Jesus said some teachings that were hard to accept. Oh, man, that's hard to accept, man. They started grumbling. Peter said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So however you're feeling this morning, you're sad, mad, glad, depressed. Jesus is with you, right? Praise the Lord. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Praise the Lord. I forgot that was going to be a segue, a lead into something, and I just forgot that right this second. <laughs> I'm not preaching with any notes, which is very rare, very scary for me. I think this is the second time in 13 years as a pastor, I don't have any notes. I don't have a pulpit in front of me, which is rare. So anyway, you have to forgive me for my little segues, and I forget where I was going. <laughs> but uh, the mission of the church, joy. Oh, we wanted to figure out, okay, what's the mission of our church? And uh, this is, you know, it was a transition in leadership between some leaders uh, that had been here. They're starting to leave. Some new leaders like Mike 
and, and Jerry were coming on board, and uh, so I, I felt I needed to make a strong statement. This is the mission of our church, changing leaders, people change. We know Jesus doesn't change, and we want to follow him, right? So uh, the mission of the church, of Joy Vineyard Church, now, I have streamlined it here. I know over the years I've, I've expanded it. I say it in different ways. Well, you say things in ten different ways, you forget what the heck you're talking about, right? So here it is. To love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength as we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ everywhere. All right, now, now there's kind of three sections of this. You know, in a sense, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But, you know, it, to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that's the first section. Secondly, as we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the third section, so that we, in a sense, love for God, love for our neighbor, being filled with the Spirit, this will facilitate, this will help us. It needs to happen <laughs> to make disciples of Jesus Christ everywhere okay now these three different parts we're going to go over these three parts there's biblical support uh, for it for it of course the first part to love God with all of our heart soul mind and strength well now where is my Bible I was waving it around before pretending I was a <laughs> oh, here it is okay <laughs> you know the Bible love is just, it's essential. God is love. Again and again in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, God is love. He is love. And you're very familiar with this, 1 Corinthians 13. I'll show you the most excellent way, right? Paul's talking about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit in the Corinthian church. And there were some disagreements. And the Holy Spirit was not, you know, under the control of the prophets. The spirits of the prophets under the control of the prophets. And things were happening. Things were getting out of control. And, hey, whatever we're going to do here, let's do it. We have to do it. We have to do it in love. Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, we'll speak in tongues. Yeah, people spoke in tongues. But have not love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. If I have a faith that can move mountains. Wow, that's pretty cool. A faith that can move mountains. But have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, surrender my body to the flames. But have not love, I gain nothing. Yes, love is first in this mission statement. Absolutely. Love the Lord your God with all your, to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you know, I got two there at the beginning, right? T-O. In English, we have a, an English teacher here. <laughs> you know that verbs in English always are in the infinitive form. To, to go, to open, to speak. To is an action word. It moves us into the verb. It's an action verb, an action word. To love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. These are the key scriptures now, especially for this one. There's many verses that talk about love, of course. Mark 12, verses 28 to 31. Of course, speaks of the greatest commandment. Somebody went up to Jesus and said, what is the greatest commandment? The second part, as we seek to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, as we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's from Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. How to be filled with the Spirit. Now, there's other verses that talk about the Holy Spirit. Most definitely. In that context, you might say, well, hey, that's in the context of the church and fellowship and building up one another and so forth. But we know that uh, the Holy Spirit, for example, in Acts... On three different occasions, either the apostles or Peter, it says, were filled with the Spirit. So the Spirit, yes, it, it uh, strengthens us as a body as we minister to one another for the strengthening of the body, right? God gives 
his gifts and his Holy Spirit for the strengthening of the body, the, the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. And also, it's not just for us. It's not just for the body. Okay? It's also that we might make, so, so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ. Three times in Acts. Filled with the Spirit. Here's Peter. Then Peter. This is uh, Acts chapter 4. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple, asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the, 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 the rulers, the elders, the teachers of the law. This is the Sanhedrin or Sanhedrin meeting in Jerusalem. The high priest is there. Caiaphas, Alexander, other members of the high priest family. These are the same dudes that uh, found Jesus guilty, wanted to kill Jesus, pronounced death on Jesus, wanted the Romans to crucify Jesus. These are the same guys. Then know this, Peter says, filled with spirit, you and all the people of Israel, is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He healed the cripple, cripple you remember. Jesus, He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Woo! This is the Peter, the dude that actually denied Jesus three times. He was very afraid, you know, just before the crucifixion. A little slave girl said, you, you were, you were with Jesus. No, I wasn't. Man, Peter is filled with the Spirit. He's strengthened. He is sharing boldly. The next verse says, when they, the Sanhedrin, saw the courage of Peter and John, realized they're unschooled, ordinary men. These are fishermen. You know, who are these dudes? They were astonished. They were astonished. They took note that these men had been with Jesus. The third part so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ everywhere. Love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength as we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ everywhere. The key verse for that is Matthew 28, 18 to 20, the Great Commission. Go into all the world, right? Okay. The first part of the mission, to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Somebody asked Jesus, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is hear this. Oh, oh, hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God. But we forget that little part there just at the beginning. The most important commandment, answered Jesus, is, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Which God are we to worship? If we did a survey of Americans, you know, do you love God? Oh, yeah, I love God. Oh, yeah, I love God. Everybody on, on the spectrum from wherever they are from theologically, Eastern mysticism, uh, reincarnation, whatever, oh, yeah, I love God. That's a concept. Sure, I love the concept of loving God. God is, is goodness. So we, I, sure, of course I love God. Which God are we to love? Love the Lord our God, your God, the God of Israel, right? The God of Scripture, the God of salvation history, right? This is who we are to love. That's the background of our mission statement. Not just any God, not just any Lord, the God of football, the God of going out, out to the beach and you know, looking at the sun and just feeling warm air and going, hmm, some God up there created this all and I just feel wonderful, so I'm loving him or her or whoever it is. Hmm. That doesn't fly at Joy Vineyard Church. To love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, which God? The God of Israel, the God of Scripture. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart with, and with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is love it. Love, the second is, is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
There is no commandment greater than these. Powerful. Love God. Love your neighbor. You can't separate it. We want to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Second part, as we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now this is very interesting. Some translations, it doesn't come out. This is the New King James Version. And from what I have read about the uh, Greek uh, grammatical syntax and so forth, this is well, uh, well translated here, this particular version. The Apostle Paul said, Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipa dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, filled with the Spirit here is an actual imperative. From what I've read uh, in, in the Greek, be filled with the Spirit. Well, uh, okay, you know, well, how do I do that, Right? Be filled with the Spirit. What is this? Is this Casper the Friendly Ghost? Should I watch more, uh, you know, little uh, children's programs? I mean, what spirit? The spirit of, uh, you know, no, filled with the Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit, of course, from the context of Paul's writings. Be filled with the Spirit, the command. Now the, what I think is referred to as the... Uh, the participles, I could be wrong because I didn't, I don't have it all written down here in my notes. <laughs> Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. How this works grammatically, for example, we live in Virginia Beach. If somebody is concerned, you, you need to rest. You know, you've been working so hard, two jobs, you got the kids, family, go to the beach. The, the imperative, go to the beach, be filled with the Spirit, go to the beach. Well, I'm new here. I, I, I haven't been to this town before. Go to the beach, grabbing the Interstate 264, going straight on the 264, turning right on Pacific, turning left on one of the side streets, and you're there. You get even the construct in English. Go to the beach, getting the ING form. Now, getting on the 264, going straight, turning right on Pacific, turning left on a side street. Okay, thanks. I know how to get to the beach. Be filled with the Spirit. Well, how? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's congregational. That's in the body of Christ. That's church. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Okay, so there's singing and there's speaking. Most churches, you have a singing portion. You have a speaking portion. That's scriptural, right? Right? singing and making mute melody in your heart to the Lord. Oh, okay. We're not just going through the motions. This is actually in my heart. And of course, I don't need to be, you know, I mean, this the first part here, there's four different parts here. Be filled with the Spirit. How? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, that's the, the, the togetherness in the body. Sunday morning, small group time, that's together. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Guess what? I can sing listening to Caleb on my car, driving to work. I'm singing and making melody in my heart, right? So we don't have to, we want to more than just, you know, Sunday morning, you know, hey, here it is. And forget about the Lord. Don't worship Him during the week. No. Make melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but if I'm bitter, I'm getting, you know, kind of crusty and jaded and I've had enough of this, you know, and that's hard to be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> that's hard for me. Giving thanks. Okay, you know, this traffic and that guy cut me off and 
hey, but I got a car that works, you know. Thank you, Lord. Right? I got a car for Pete's sakes. Others are waiting at the bus stop. I can I can wait in this traffic jam or I can wait for a bus. And then the bus is in the traffic jam as much as the car, right? <laughs> Giving thanks. Lord, help us to have thanks. Oh, God. Oh, God. Submitting to one another in the fear of, of God. Submitting to one another. And, of course, the context here that goes on to family relationships, but it's also in the church. If people are fighting, it's hard to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but if you're fighting with somebody, how can you be filled with the Spirit? And one, a Christian brother said to me, you're, oh, you're the vineyard, oh, you're filled with the Spirit. Well, God, can you get more of the Holy Spirit? Don't you get all of the Holy Spirit? Well, we get all of the Holy Spirit, yes. But I liken it to an analogy, and maybe this isn't a perfect analogy, but, you know, I have a full cup of water. I have all of the Holy Spirit. But as it fills under a tap, guess what? It's filling. And there's a freshness. There's a movement in that cup. I'm still full of water. Is there more water now than there was before? No, if I lift the cup out, it's the same amount of water. But there's a, there's a filling. We're renewed. There's a freshness. There's movement in my spirit. You know what? That guy at work that I've never talked to about Jesus because I was afraid. I think he's going to make fun of me. Wow, I feel God as I'm filled with the Spirit. Say something to that guy or gal. Wow. Filled with the Spirit like Peter did before the Sanhedrin. You know, you share. Wow. You know? As we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ everywhere. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Jesus is all authority. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We know a disciple is a follower. You have to begin following. People need to come to faith in Christ. They need to be born again to begin following. <laughs> if you're not born again, you're not following. How can you be a disciple? Well, I like the teachings of Jesus, and I try and follow. Well, that's good. I mean, there's some good teachings. Other things Jesus says, you're going to think are off the wall, right? Hey, I, he is my Lord. He is my Savior. I begin to follow. We come to faith. I follow. I'm a disciple. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son, teaching them to obey all I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. The Lord's with us always. Nothing will ever separate us from His great love. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Again, the mission of Joy Vineyard Church is to love God with all our heart and soul, mind and strength as we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ everywhere. Everywhere. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much, Lord, for this church. Thank you, Lord, for these brothers and sisters. And Lord, how much I see your love in them. Lord, I see them going to a Friday night uh, worship time to be with brothers and sisters, singing and making music in their hearts seeking to be filled with Your presence, with Your Spirit, Lord God. And yes, Lord, we don't just want to know Your love and to uh, be filled with the Spirit so we feel good and we've got you know more love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all those good things. Well, I feel better. No, Lord, we want to be a blessing. You've called us to send us forth everywhere we go the good news of Jesus the Savior of the world, who forgives us of all of our sin as He died on the cross there for us. Lord God, people need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. Oh God. Thank You, Lord, for this time. Thank You, Lord, for our church. Thank You that You are God no matter what. We love You, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Amen.